Let me introduce myself. I'm a producer. We just completed a spectacular film on a great woman. Open your eyes. This is America. The greatest nation on earth. Where rats have it better than Italian children. If we are to build an empire of hope, we must first conquer New York. Our New York is being threatened by a wave of brown skin filth. They just keep coming. We ought to ship them all back. We have to show America we are all people of dignity. I want to build an orphanage and give the abandoned children the love they so badly need. If you're asking my permission... No. Your mission is over, Mother. My mission has barely begun. This is a beautiful place to live in. Now we need to feel it with children. Be careful. This place will eat you alive. You're under arrest. Even the Pope cannot protect you from what may come. You have to learn to face your fears. Who the hell do you think you are? I am a woman, and I am Italian. We are all the same, all human beings, children of God. I believe I'm being threatened by a nun. Most of these Italians are already Americans. You have an election coming up, do you not? <laughs> and I thought you were new at this. And this woman is the first American saint. Her name is Frances Xavier Cabrini. A lot of people know about her, but very few people know anything that represents who she was. My name is Eustace Wolfington. In 1955, when I was 23 years of age, I was searching for a church where I could go to mass near my work. The priest said, we're gonna do a novena on Mother Cabrini. So my wife-to-be and I went to this novena. And when I walked out after nine weeks, I said to myself, wow, what a spectacular woman. She was a make it happen lady and I wanted to make things happen in my life. So I was gonna adopt her as my patron saint. 50 years later, a nun walked to my office, the sister Mary Louise Sullivan, and said, Eustace, Will you help us do a movie on Mother Cabrini? I had done a film called Bella back in 2005. I said, sister, I don't want to do another movie. You just, you just can't imagine what goes into making a movie. She came back in 2016. She came back in 2017. Finally, in 2018, sister invited me up to the Cabrini Shrine to introduce me to an Italian film company that was going to do the movie on Mother Cabrini. I looked at what they were going to do, and I said, sister, you can't do a movie like that on Mother Cabrini. They want to do a fairy tale movie of a saint. Now here I am, 90 years old. And I said, sister, but I can't do it. She said, Eustace, no one else can do it. So at that point, I realized that I had to do the film. We had to make a film that was going to be a classic, it was be the most dynamic film to represent her life. It couldn't be halfway. It had to be 100%. So I had to find a great writer. I interviewed several writers. I finally found a writer that sent me four scripts. I liked the way he wrote. The first step was to travel to Cadogno, her hometown, to visit all the historians who live in her original convent. We were there for 10 days. We read 26 books on her life. We then walked her path around America. New York, Chicago, Denver, New Orleans, 
San Francisco, LA, Seattle, Washington. Then I said to the writer, now you know Mother Cabrini better than anybody in the world, and you can now write the script. And he wrote a beautiful script on who she was. I was talking to a very big Hollywood person that I thought would be perfect for this movie. But I was sitting in church one day and I had this overwhelming message to go back to a director who I'd worked with on Bella. I hadn't gone to him because I thought he was already busy with another movie. That's what I had been told. When I left church, it was an eight o'clock May, so I came back to my home and the telephone rang. This was a phone call from another person I hadn't heard from in a long time to tell me I have to use Alejandro. That was my sign. He was just about to sign when I called him. I caught him just in time. He agreed to sign on. And we shot the film in Buffalo nine weeks. And we shot the other part in Rome 10 days. Morning, noon, and night. We were shooting at four o'clock in the morning, five o'clock in the morning. But what we made turned out to be a masterpiece. The cinematography is actually the most beautiful works of art you've ever seen. You know, as a filmmaker, I, I truly believe we, we listen with our eyes. And sound complement what we see. And for me, to tell the story of Mother Cabrini, her life was, an, was an, a spectacle as in itself. She, she created an art piece with her life, with everything she did, with everything she accomplished, and all the impact she had in, in, in the world. And I became a student again. You know, even though I went to film school for six years and I already had shot three films, I say for this film I want to go back and I want to figure out a way to capture her life in a magnificent way. I was told that you were rejected by three different orders, each time for weakness of constitution. Your Holiness, we can serve our weakness or we can serve our purpose, not both. My sisters, if we are to build an empire of hope, it seems we must first conquer New York. Filthy dagos, they just keep coming. Your papa is suicidal. And your mama and Martha did for. In America, the greatest nation on earth, rats have it better than the children of five points. It's not safe. Not for you. Be careful. This place will eat you alive. <laughs> for me, the text is the easiest thing to do. It's very simple. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do it right now. I really liked your jacket. That's text. Thank you. Anyone can say that. Yes. Anybody. Now, subtext. How can I say that I really like your jacket without a word? How can I say why I liked your jacket? Because maybe your jacket rem it reminds me of my father. Then there's another level, it's deeper. And then you go on and then it's the subtext where the gold is. This thing that we're gonna see, the whole movie is like that. It would took us many, many months to craft everything on paper. By the time we went to set, we just went to execute. This is not a movie that was captured like 99% of the films. This film, it was like, I don't know if you've seen the documentary Solo. I mean, the guy that, yes, that climbed El Capitan yes, with no ropes, yep. that's how we shot this film. We had no ropes, there was no room for mistakes. Everything was shot in a way that can only be edited one particular way and that's it. And if so it doesn't work, it doesn't work. When we talked to John Irwin, a friend of the studio, he's working on the Founders Project. His most recent release was Jesus Revolution. He said to us when he saw the trailer, ooh, that film must have been $100 million to make. And this scene that we're gonna see right now, going back to the power of subtext, you're gonna see a scene, Cabrini represents power. She's powerful. We all are powerful, but we don't know how to tap into that power. She knew. She was able to look into your face 
and speak directly, transcend your mind, and speak directly to your heart, which is where the truth belongs. And she was able to, in a way, be able to co accomplish what she needs, which it was, for her, was life or death, because if she didn't accomplish that, millions of children will die. This scene that we're gonna see right now, she was so powerful that they're looking completely in different directions about the future, about what they want to do in, uh, within their mission. And he tells her, it's time for you to go back to New York. You're fired, pretty much. But she cannot tell her to her face, one, because he doesn't have the strength to look her into her face to fire her. But two, he goes and goes behind her, and they're both looking in different directions. That's the subtext. How far from each other are they looking into what they think needs to be done with the people that have nothing? I warned you, but you were blinded by ambition, naked ambition. You chose to disobey me, and now your actions have become the problem of the archdiocese and the souls under my care. You have left me no choice but to inform you that your institutions are to be disbanded. And you and your sisters are to return to Italy. I assure you that the Archdiocese will handle your wards appropriately. You mean my children. Your mission is over, Mother. My mission has barely begun. Mother Cabrini. You asked me to destroy my houses and run back to Italy like a criminal. You were arrested, were you not? This problem will be with us in a hundred years. And there is no point working yourself to death trying to change it. Some things never change. Forgive me if I don't have the strength to think like you. Well, despite that, the Italians have survived without you, and somehow they will continue to do so. You are to leave New York and never return. This is an order of obedience. Mother Cabrini went back to Italy to ask the Pope for permission to override the Archbishop's order and come back to America. The Pope said to Mother Cabrini, look, the Archbishop is right. You have taken on too much of a burden and you're not going to be able to complete it. And what that burden was, Mother Cabrini saw that they wouldn't take any of the poor Italians in any of the hospitals. So she decided she was going to have to build a major hospital in New York. And she built the Columbus Hospital. When she went to the banks to get the money, she couldn't get it. All the doctors boycotted her. When she couldn't raise that money, that was one other thing that made him say to her, you got to get out of here. Because the whole city was in an uproar about her building that hospital. The Pope said, if you can raise the money for the hospital, I'll override the Archbishop's order and let you go back to America. So Mother Cabrini went to the Italian Senate and made an appointment to see the head senator. He left her waiting outside his door for eight hours and finally came out and said to her, look, we've talked about it. We don't do this kind of financing, especially for a woman. Mother Cabrini went home that night and woke up in the middle of the night and said, I'm going to storm that Senate and I'm going to get them 
to see the need to give me the money to build this hospital for the Italian immigrants. That's the scene we're going to show you now. Signori, questo è il momento per noi tutti di trovare un accordo. Infatti è il popolo stesso che esige che le camere trovino un punto di incontro. Signori, aprite i vostri cuori ai rifugiati, agli immigranti italiani a cui non resta che affrontare l'oceano. In America, nella grande città di New York, come può un immigrato italiano... Ufficiale, la accompagni fuori. Fermati, Subito. caro. Non un passo Ufficiale, di... Ufficiale, lei deve portare via questa donna. Non mi avete permesso di parlare prima, senatore Bodio. Lo farò qui. Adesso. Buttatela fuori. Perché parlo per i dimenticati. Parlo per i vostri compatrioti che scommettono tutto sull'America per scoprire che cosa? Che persino i ratti vivono meglio. Parlo per quelle bambine abbandonate per strada, costrette a diventare prostitute per sopravvivere. Per le loro famiglie, ammassate in baracche e per i loro padri che muoiono soli in una fogna come cani tutti loro vi stanno dicendo che non vogliono la vostra elemosina sono italiani sono orgogliosi ma vi dicono anche questo. Non è un posto per una donna, basta! Che un solo piccolo gesto d'amore può cambiare ogni cosa. Una parola di speranza, una carezza, un posto in cui potersi curare e guarire. Sono queste le cose che cambiano il mondo. E chiedono al grande senatore Bodio di ascoltare il loro caso. Perché nell'ora della nostra morte ci verrà domandato che cosa abbiamo fatto per i poveri, i malati, coloro a cui è stata strappata la dignità. Che cosa abbiamo fatto? The story, a great, powerful story. The acting, the acting is, we've had this film tested and the acting is off the charts. So Mother Cabrini really took this film over. A little backtrack, we made Mother Cabrini the executive producer on this film. And that had such an effect on the crew that the passion and the fire of everyone working on this film was like a Notre Dame football rally. Several people before us big names that tried to do a movie on Mother Cabrini. Sophia Loren wanted to do a movie on Mother Cabrini. Loretta Young had gone to Martin Scorsese in the 1970s and said, I want to play Mother Cabrini. And they went ahead and started a film, completed the script, but never completed the film. I realized that God wanted to take her life from back in the past and bring it to today. With all the problems we're having in our world today, Mother Cabrini lived the same kind of life back then and bringing her life forward today is a message where she cannot be canceled out with cancel culture. That's a beautiful message. I don't have to urge you to go see it because I know you will want to go see it having seen the clips. But I do urge you to help us with our original mission and that's what this movie is, it's a mission. Our mission is to make Mother Cabrini known to the world, number one, and number two, to let her life be an inspiration to this generation all over the world. This film is a universal film. We showed it to people in life imprisonment terms. We showed it to Hindus, Muslims, all nationalities. Everyone falls in love with Mother Cabrini. Some people get out of bed and they look at the city they live in. Then you look at the state, then you look at the country. 
Then you look at the world. That was Mother Cabrini. Mother Cabrini's vision was the world, that everyone counts. Our Lord gave us that message. Every single soul counts. We can see the face of Christ in everyone. It's important that everyone sees this film. It will touch everybody at the points that God wired within them, the same truths that we all seek. And this movie brings it out. I pray that every person who sees this film, it touches their soul and changes their life. I need an orphanage with more room where my children can be children. I'd like you to keep your crime and your filth out of this neighborhood. The mayor will find a way to get you out. You have an election coming up, do you not? I believe I am being threatened by a nun. You have swatted the hornet's nest. Get out, Go! I want the best hospital for your people and for mine. We have to show America we are all people of dignity. This project is overly ambitious, perhaps unrealistic. We are bold or we die. <laughs>